our problem here is a little bit more sophisticated in terms of, well, how do we you know, fix this? You can see that I have a fancy word here called the conjugate. I'll explain uh, what this is in a second because this is what we need to understand in order to solve this problem. Now, here, if you're saying if we had like 3 over the square root of m, you might be saying, well, do I need to multiply uh, both the top and the bottom here, the numerator and denominator, by the square root of m? Yes, indeed. Okay, this would be the way to uh, do this problem. Okay, but we have this square root of m minus 1. So this gets a little bit more interesting. We're like, well, how do I deal with this? Well, we need to understand this concept called the conjugate. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the conjugate. And the conjugate is simply, when we take a look at our denominator here, the square root of m minus 1, all the conjugate is, it's the same thing, but we're going to write the opposite sign. So in other words, if this is minus, we're going to turn this into plus. So the conjugate of this expression is the square root of m plus 1. Okay. Now if I had this expression, the square root of m plus 1, its conjugate would be the square root of m minus 1. So the conjugate is uh, effectively the same thing. You're just going to uh, switch the sign in these respective binomials. Okay, so all we're going to do now is multiply both the numerator and denominator by the conjugate. Again, so we're looking here, the square root of m minus 1. Okay, what's the conjugate? It's the square root of m plus 1. So now we're going to multiply uh, the denominators and the numerator by the conjugate. Okay, so now this really comes down to your algebra skills. If you notice here, the conjugate is the square root of m plus 1 divided by the square root of m plus 1. This, again, is just a fancy one, so we're not breaking the problem. We're not kind of rewriting this or changing it into any uh, anything else. So this really comes down to your ability to uh, do some basic um, multiplication when you, we have some algebraic terms. So if you want to go ahead and try that, go ahead and do this uh, problem if you just want to see if you have the algebra skills. But let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now I wouldn't uh, stop this lovely math video if it wasn't that important. Now of course uh, it's important to me, but it's important to my goal, which is to reach as many people that need help in math as possible. Okay, that's why I've, I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I actually have like over, well over 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math and calculus and everything in between because I love teaching mathematics, but what I really love is helping people understand math. It's a big problem out there, unfortunately. Just a lot of people are frustrated because they're not getting the math instruction they need. Okay, so if I can do something about that, well, then that's, you know, pretty much the big payoff for me in terms of this YouTube channel. But I do need your help. So by you subscribing and hitting that notification bell, it really does um, help YouTube kind of push out my content um, to those people that could benefit from it. So thank you so much uh, for listening to me uh, kind of have my little commercial pitch here, but I have to do this because it's the only way that I keep uh, keep growing my channel. But let's go ahead and finish this problem up. Okay, so this part of the problem is kind of, you know, uh, where we're going to get get into some, you know, I don't want to say uh, complex algebra, but certainly things that the most students need to understand at like an algebra one, first year algebra level. Okay, because we have to do some some work here. And again, we're here is our problem, and we're going to multiply uh, this fraction by the conjugate. Right. So let's go ahead and first deal with the denominator because this is where a little bit more work is required. And then, of course, we'll uh, do this multiplication in the numerator. So let's just focus in here on the denominator. Square root of m minus 1 times the square root of m plus 1. How can we do this problem? Okay. Well, there's two ways you can approach this problem. You can use the FOIL method, uh, first, outer, inner, last, or you can use... Uh, the difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared, is equal to a plus b times a minus b. Okay, But the bottom line is you need to know how to multiply binomials. These are called binomials uh, in algebra because we have two things here 
uh, this right here by itself would be a, monom a monomial, uh, but two terms put together surrounded by parentheses is called a binomial. So you got to be able to find the product of uh, two binomials. So these are our two options, but uh, this option here, the difference of two squared, you should understand this right here, especially if you are an algebra student, because this is absolutely a must-know formula for uh, factoring. Now, if you are like, oh my goodness, I am totally lost, and you are actually trying to learn algebra, well, you definitely need to check out my, my Algebra 1 course. I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video, but it's just, you know, use this as feedback on what you don't understand and what you need to work on, okay? So just because you don't, you know, you're lost right now or if you're like, boy, you're overwhelmed, well, just use that, again, you know, as uh, um, a indicator that, yes, indeed, I need to review this and you probably could benefit from some full instruction on this material, not like a quick tutorial. But let me go ahead and show you how we can find the product of these two binomials using both the FOIL method and the difference of two squares. Let's go ahead and uh, first talk about the difference of two squares. So if you notice here, if we look at this pattern, we, can, we have an A minus B times A plus B. In other words, the square root of M, if we think of that as the variable A, well, we have an A right here and a square root, square root of M is also right here as an A. Now this is just a formula, it's just a value, okay? So the square root of M, well, that's like, we can call that A, and here's the square root of M, we can call this A right here. And then B is just another number, so we have the same number here, one, so we'll uh, call that, uh, or we can think of that as B, and then we have one right here, so it's the same value, right? So the square root of M minus one, or A minus B, and this would be A plus B, okay? So you can see, basically, our problem fits this pattern, a minus b times a plus b. So we have a formula. Again, this is called the difference of two squares because the difference is when we subtract two things, we have two things that we're squaring, a squared minus b squared. But it happens to be, okay, what we want. If you notice here, uh, we're multiplying these two, uh, two binomials in this pattern, a minus b times a plus b, and this, effectively this is what we have. So to do this multiplication, all we have to do is just uh, square a and square b. So if the square root of m is a and 1 is b, if we square these two things, we will indeed actually have done, you know, basically the multiplication. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So a squared minus b squared, this will be the square root of m squared minus 1 squared, the square root of m squared is m, and 1 squared is 1. So our multiplication here, all this product is just basically m minus 1. You can see we barely did any work here. So that's why you want to understand uh, the uh, difference of two squared formula, especially when you're dealing with radical expressions and uh, conjugate uh, problems. Uh, it just makes our life a lot easier. But this is not the only way we could have figured out this. We could have used the FOIL method uh, to figure out um, uh, square root of m minus 1 times the square root of m plus 1. And I'm going to show you that method right now because, again, we're still going to get m minus 1. But let's go ahead and take a look at the work. Okay, so the FOIL method is first outer, inner, last. It's just kind of a special way to multiply uh, binomials. So the first is the first term. So this is the first terms right here in each of these respective binomials. So uh, square root of m times the square root of m would be like our f, okay, our first. So the square root of m times the square root of m is the square root of m squared or m. Okay, so that is our answer right there. So the outer is these terms, okay? This is our outer, so it's the outer terms of the two binomials. So the square root of m times 1 is the square root of m, the positive square root of m. And now our that's our O, our I is our inner. So that's this negative, a negative 1 times the square root of m. So that will be negative square root of m. And then L is our last, which would be our last terms. So we have a negative 1 times a positive 1, which is negative 1. And you can see here that our square roots of uh, m, okay, this is a positive square root of m, minus a, a, a negative or minus square root of m, or, base, or plus a negative square root of m, is 0. These kind of cross cancel, or they cancel each other out. So we're left with m minus 1, which, of course, is the same thing that we got 
when we were using the difference of uh, two squares, m minus one. Okay, so that is a good amount of work to figure out what the denominator is. So now what we need to do is uh, basically figure out the numerator, which is pretty easy. Okay, so, so again, let's just review what we have. We understand that we have a problem here because we have this square root in the denominator. So we're like, oh, we need the conjugate, all right, which is going to be the opposite of this sign. So that's the square root of m, uh, uh, square root of m plus one, and we have to multiply both the numerator and denominator by that expression. So we just did all of this work right here, and it turned out this is m minus one. Okay. So let's go to take a look at our answer here. So we figured out the denominator. We have m minus 1, so guess what? We have no square root or radical in the denominator, so we are good to go. And to get the numerator, basically all we have to do is use the distributive property. So it's going to be this times this, the square root of m, times the square root of m is going to be the square root of m squared, or m. And then we have the square root of m uh, times 1, so that would be this uh, plus the square root of m times 1 is nothing more than the square root of m, so m plus the square root of m is our numerator. Okay, so again, what we're talking about here is uh, really critical to those of you that are taking algebra. Uh, you know, I'm not doing anything here that you uh, will not see. You're absolutely guaranteed to see this, uh, you know, these type of problems. In terms of level of difficulty, I would say this problem is maybe like a 5 out of 10. There's certainly much more complicated um, problems dealing with the conjugate than this. But again, you know, uh, in algebra, everything is important. Matter of fact, in math, everything is important. So what you want to do is figure out what you don't understand and go back to that skill and basically, you know, fix it. Understand it and then continue to kind of climb the stairs to, you know, uh, learning as much math as you can. But if you're like, ah, I don't really want to fix that weak area and just kind of hope that you never see it again, well, it never works out that way. Okay, so how you approach learning math is really going to be critical in terms of your math success. There are no shortcuts. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.